have to start in Israel. There's lots to get to, so let's get to it. Um, this guy, I think I remember him. He was the a guy who was a Canadian guy, and then he moved down to Mexico because he was saying like Canada's crazy, man. And now he's saying he was <clears throat> he's an Arab, an Israeli Arab, who lived in Israel, grew up in Israel, and a bunch of his friends are Jews. And he's saying we as Jews and Israelis or Jews and Arabs can live together. And I just thought that was an interesting place to start considering where we're going. So here we go. This is a firsthand account. Take it with a grain of salt. It's the internet, but I thought believable, plausible even. I've I've talked to people. I've met people in person who have espoused the same thing that this guy's saying. In like in Guelph here, I've talked to people personally. Um, so it's it's interesting and and interesting. Understand that there are people like this and I've met them. I haven't just seen them on the internet. Here we go. Good f morning. Today, I am going Sorry. to report to you the truth that no one tells you about. Not your government, not your media, and not your friends from both sides, whether they are supporting Israel or whether they are supporting the Palestinians. And that truth is that Israelis and Palestinians can live together. Don't let anyone lie to you. In fact, Inside Israel, there are over 2 million Arab Israelis who live in peace together with the Jews. You don't believe me? I am going to show you. As of March 2023, Israel's population stands at approximately 9.73 million. Jews make up about 73% and Arabs make about 21%, which means we are about 2.048 million. Listen, Habibi, I was born and grew up in Israel. Most of my friends are Jews and they always ac accepted me for who I am. We live together, we work together, we go to grocery store together, we, 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 we love together, we f together, we date together, we do everything together. Don't ever confuse the, the peaceful people with the governments or militias and don't let anyone ever manipulate your perception so they can create more wars. Peace. Okay. So fundamentally, I think he's bang on. I think that people are trying to push a perception, trying to use political assets that have been moved into position on purpose by these people themselves, Bibi Netanyahu, uh, the United States government, West, other Western governments operating through CIA, FBI, other clandestine um, letter agencies, et cetera, et cetera, across the world, right? I think that this is absolutely plausible. I've seen it in every James Bond, uh, but not to say that movie tropes are reality. That's certainly a stretch, but at the same time, the real stuff we see, the Seth Rich laptop, um, well, the, the Seth Rich situation, period, the, there, there are many operations that have been Bay of Pigs that have been declassified over the years that look like conspiracies, multi-layered, involving the, the American government. And that's just one example. The UK government has scandals, all sorts. So is it plausible that this is something that they want? They want war. They want funding. They know that people aren't going to go for Ukraine because they removed McCarthy in the US to stop funding that. So what, what will people fund? Well, they'll fight to fund Israel. So here we go right? Is this plausible, possible? Well, I mean, it's a plan. This is this is TJ, and he's sharing this, um, talking about how Israel created Hamas. And I've been talking about this a couple of days, for a couple of days, because it's important to set the stage and understand what's going on. This is just kind of a, a whole um, write-up of this and a proof of this. Um, I'll just show a little bit of, the, of it, but this is Har 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 Haretz, and this is a magazine or a newspaper that focuses on Israel, Jews, um, et cetera. And I'll show you the real tweet, but this is the tweet. It says a quote from Netanyahu himself. He says, anyone who wants to thwart the establishment of a Palestinian state has to support bolstering Hamas and transferring money to Hamas. Netanyahu told his leak, I, I can't say the word, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it, Likud party's Neset members in March, 2019. That is part of our strategy. So funding Hamas to undermine a Palestinian state is part of the strategy. And has the strategy paid off? Um, here is here is Rand Paul discussing funding Hamas and Israel. He says, sure, we should support Israel. Maybe we should take that funding from the support we send to Hamas. And and I think, again, it's funny, this, very sim, this easy... Very, everybody's very at ease about sending money to Israel and saying we should stop funding Hamas. But 
the thing I want you to take away from this is the U.S. is funding both sides. So are we. The West is funding both sides. Right. Here we go. Now we're in this situation that Israel needs emergency aid. How will you deal with that? What is your recommendation? The same way I always have is that I'm all for the aid. In fact, we had this debate about a year ago with Democrats. Uh, they wanted a billion dollars more for Iron Dome. And I said, sure, I'm for that. Let's take it from a fund that we're funding the Taliban with. There's still a couple billion dollars out there that we are the Afghan reconstruction fund that's going to the Taliban, to people who are not our friends, who are our enemies Why? in I Afghanistan. Don't understand that. Why are we funding the Taliban? They think that somehow when you give money to your enemies, it makes them less of an adversary. We still give money to the Palestinian Authority. We give money to the PLO. Low. So what I would say is, sure, let's fund whatever Israel needs now, but let's take it from funds that we're sending to countries that don't like us, that burn our flag, that chant into America. Why are we giving money to people who hate us? So let's give it to our friends if need be, but let's make sure we take it from somewhere else in the budget. And that may or may not make me very popular, but I insist on this all of the time. And if you don't do it, that's why you wind up with a $33 trillion debt. Well, I mean, has the administration commented on the fact that we've been funding, giving money to the Palestinian Authority? I have these battles all the time. I've battled the head of Senate Foreign Relations over this many times on the floor over whether we should still be giving money to the Taliban, whether we still should be giving money to the Palestinians. So years ago, I introduced the first bill that would have gotten rid of these martyr payments, where people who were blowing themselves up and blowing up Israeli civilians were getting payments, but it was coming out of a fund that the U.S. government was funding this fund. So I was the first one to introduce that, and they got rid of some of the payments, but some of those payments are still going to the Palestinians, and I'm for eliminating all of that foreign aid to the Palestinian Authority. Senator, we want to know. So it's very, very interesting that if you want to undermine the Palestinian state, keep funding the Palestinian war machine that's happening right now. Keep funding Hamas, right? Because Hamas is in control of, of Palestine, of, of the West Bank, of Gaza, et cetera. Um, so I think that that's very interesting, this strategy in play. And we'll see where, where this strategy leads. Robin Minotti says, Egypt intelligence officials say Israel ignored repeated warnings of something big. Egypt's intelligence minister, General Abbas Kamel, personally called Netanyahu 10 days before the massive attack that Gazans were likely to, quote, do something unusual, a terrible operation, according to the Ynet news site. Unnamed Egyptian officials told the site they were shocked by Netanyahu's indifference to the news and said the premier told the minister the military was submerged in troubles in the West Bank. So they were warned. They were warned. And here is, um, again, this is Netanyahu's tweet. I've already read it. Here's Netanyahu saying, every Hamas operative will die. Hamas is ISIS. I thought ISIS was CIA. ISIS was funded by the U.S. just like the West Bank and, and Israel, too. They're all funded by the CIA and the, and, and the United States. Here we go. Here's a, this is a three-minute speech. This is the end of the three-minute speech. This is the part where he says they'll be smashed. The world has to come together to defeat Hamas, who we were previously encouraging you to fund, by the way. Thank you very much for that funding. Now we must destroy them. Here we go. Going a battle and warfare. Aircrafts are on their way here and a lot of ammunition is coming to Israel and will be arriving at Israel. And it's important. We are fighting in full force in all theaters. Now we are on the offensive. Every Hamas operative will die. Hamas is ISIS. We will crush them and get rid of them just as the world crushed and got rid of ISIS. I would like to strengthen our combatants, all the people in our security forces and relief and rescue forces. The entire people of Israel are behind you. And I so there you go. That's the that's the plan, right? These people committed a ter- terrible atrocities. Sure, we were warned. Sure, we funded ISIS. Sure, our allies fund not ISIS, excuse Hamas, whatever you want to call it. Sure, we did all of these things. Sure, we set the stage for for the circumstances to lead to this inevitable outcome not exactly this but you know an, an attack violence etc cetera, etc cetera. but now we have the pretext for war and we'll go in and smash them rah rah sis boom bah, right we're supposed to get on board with this here's iSource news biden's warns netanyahu about war crimes charges white house puts pressure on israel to restore water food and electricity to gaza so that's interesting to me i've been reporting that they've shut off water and electricity to the, the gaza strip 
so on and so forth. And because of that, that's a humanitarian issue now. And people are saying, you can't do this. Here's Erdogan, which I've recently learned how to say his name. <laughs> he says, any war that depends on cutting off water, electricity, and roads and destroying infrastructure, places of worship and schools is called a massacre. Yeah, I don't disagree, right, with with him. And it's interesting how much people will ignore because reports of dead babies, okay? And I've got conflicting reports. Here's This is one. Um, Nestor says extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Suleiman Ahmed says here's an Israeli journalist who actually debunks the whole Hamas killing 40 babies. Here's that series of tweets. It says, one of five. I'm getting a lot of questions about the reports of Hamas beheaded babies that were published after the media tour in the village. During the tour, we didn't see any evidence of this, and the army spokesperson or commanders also didn't mention any such incidents. During the tour, journalists were allowed to speak to the hundreds of soldiers on site without the supervision of the army spokesperson team. I-24 reporters said she heard it from soldiers. Soldiers I spoke with in Kfar Aza yesterday didn't mention beheading babies or beheaded babies. The army spokesperson stated, we cannot confirm at this point we are aware of the heinous acts Hamas is capable of. Sadly, Hamas, yeah, uh, Hamas. There we go. Um, I thought it said Hezbollah, sorry. That's why I went back to check because I was going to say that's a different group. But it's not. Hezbollah is not Hamas, although Hezbollah has been threatening as well. But anyway, back to this. Sadly, 5 of 5, Israel will now use these false claims to escalate the bombing of Gaza and to justify its war crimes there. Update, this story is still unfolding and information is still coming in that needs to be verified. I'll update when I have more. So I've seen a Jerusalem Times, J Times, I think, article saying that the the allegation is correct, that yes, indeed, um, pictures have been confirmed of this but i've seen it, it seems like a rap smear because the rap smear is you get a newspaper to report something and then the politician says i can't believe this awful thing i heard in the newspaper but the awful thing you heard in the newspaper is the thing you leaked to the newspaper for you to react and then the politician saying i can't believe this verified thing that i saw in the newspaper happened is that's news that confirms the first report it's all fabricated right so is this true or is this a newspaper making this true, magicking this up? I honestly don't know. So if there's dead babies, that's terrible. But it seems very emotionally manipulative on a whole bunch of different levels. Here is Clandestine outlining this. He says, accuse your enemy of heinous atrocities. When someone asks to see proof, don't let them see it and claim it's too heinous to be seen. If anyone doesn't believe you, accuse them of sympathizing for the heinous atrocities that have not been proven. Checkmate. Right. Here's Joe Biden saying that I saw these pictures. Joe Biden has said crazy stuff, like the craziest stuff. He said he was he, he said he was present at historical events that he was not present at. And people asked about this and they get ignored. I'm not commenting on that next question. People ask about Joe Biden's microphone being cut off. This seems emotionally manipulated and, and they get dismissed for asking about his microphone being cut off when he goes off script. He's scripted. He's saying what he's told to say, and I don't believe a word he says. And if the Jerusalem Times actually has seen these pictures, they're going to need to print, like to publish them. I'm not going to take people's word for it. That's not, and even if they publish them, I'm not sure I'll believe it because it seems so emotionally manipulative, and I don't think people would be above photoshopping it, honestly. So at this point in time, man, like, I don't know how I'm going to believe what's coming out of here, but they're doing everything and anything they can to ju to, for you to justify to yourself atrocities because those people aren't real people. They're animals who beheaded babies and they deserve to have the Gaza Strip flattened. They don't, right? I don't, like that's an atrocity. You can't get on board with that, but that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to tell you anything to get you there mentally. That's what they're trying to do. Here's Joe Biden trying to convince you. This is 32 seconds. I don't know if we'll li listen to all of it because I just can't stand Joe Biden. But here is uh, here it is. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. I never thought I'd ever. Anyway, I. Uh, but there are countries in the region that are trying to be of some help including Arab nations, trying to be of some help. So, uh, anyway. 
I mean, at least he didn't try and compare it to the one time his garage almost went up in flames with his Ferrari inside, right? Like, <laughs> there's, there's something, right? That's what he did with the Lahaina fire. We almost had a fire that one time. There's an electrical thing in the garage and the Ferrari was in there. It was a big deal. Anyway, shame about that Lahaina, right? Mm, moving on. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. I don't believe Joe Biden. Joe Biden saying that makes me even more skeptical, if anything. I don't think to myself, man, I must have got it wrong. I think to myself, the baby thing seems like it hit. They know they have absolutely no evidence. So they fabricated the evidence in order to make it a plausible story. And somebody, foreign, J Times, somebody like that, Jerusalem Times, somebody, somebody who's not in the pocket of Joe Biden has got to confirm this. It's got to be third party or something like that. I'm sure. I'm sure this is spin. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Still... I refuse to be manipulated because this seems so effing manipulative. <laughs> Melissa Lanceman, to bring it home, uh, Matt Gurney says, you may have seen the government and its supporters telling everyone that our embassy in Israel was operational over the weekend. That seemed like a, why, a weird choice of words. I thought they were trying to bullshit Canadians. I was right, and I can prove it. The embassy was closed, and that's what this article talks about in readtheline.ca. So I've never heard of that before, readtheline.ca, and it's paywalled, so I didn't go and read how he can prove it. But Melissa Lanceman believes him enough to share his newspaper, and, and she says, she's got a quote from the article, quote, as Israelis were being slaughtered and Canadians begged for help, the government was gaming out how to best communicate with the public to deflect criticism, and they settled on dishonesty. <laughs> Canadians need to be able to trust that their government doesn't lie about the basics of keeping them safe. I'm pretty sure Canadians are at the point where they understand that the government is lying unless they have verifiable third-party proof right there like to to verify. Look, do you remember Marco Mendicino? The guy can't tell the truth. He's allergic to the truth for crying out loud. The people know that this government lies to them. People are very skeptical of this government. Nobody's taking what they say at face value. Oh, these guys have got it well in hand. Look at the economy crying out loud. Look at the interest rates. Look at the price of food. These idiots have no idea what they're doing. We have to, <laughs> Melanie Jolie, you have to charter a flight out of Israel. Oh, did you know that all the, all the flights out of Israel are, it's, it's canceled. You can't book a flight out of Israel. Did you know that? Yes, you're, you're the foreign affairs minister. You're supposed to be able to do these things when nobody else can. That's why it's your job. And then she said, the other day she said, we've got CAF, like we've got Canadian Air Force, uh, I think CAF, um, Canadian Armed Forces is CAF. What's Canadian Air Force? Uh, I can't remember the, our, our Royal Canadian Air Force, RC, whatever it is. They got the Canadian Air Force to come in and, and do that. That's what they said the other day, to come in with a plane and the rest. And then today, I'll show you, she says, we've got an Air Canada crew. We've got a single Air Canada crew to fly into Israel that's at war with Hamas right now? Weird. It's weird. Anyway, she seems completely totally inept in her role and it seems canada's worst for it back to this aaron says now being told the embassy is in fact open it wasn't perhaps they should update their voicemail message since canadians trapped in israel have been getting nowhere trying to get help and aaron wardick again he says i was wrong it wasn't open this was just spin the government settled on calling desperate canadians looking for help a bunch of liars rather than just admit the truth because the spin must always take precedence right they, they got marco mendicino to, to spin it right he sounds super legit here's uh, he sounds it, but everybody knows he's lying because it's Marco Mendicino. Um, concerned Canadian says, Jolie, Melanie Jolie, stated that she's too busy to answer why the embassy was closed as she is too preoccupied addressing all of the recent global issues. I, for one, call for the immediate resignation of Melanie Jolie, who's candidly, who candidly is blatantly incompetent with marginal at best geopolitical acumen. Who joins me? Second, that's seconded. <laughs> Can we carry it? Yes, okay. Mackenzie Gray says, Jolie reiterates, flights out of Israel will start in the coming days. Canadian citizens and family members will be flown to Athens. And Jolie says, from there, an Air Canada plane has been secured to fly people back to Canada. Oh, okay, I missed that step. So I guess it's it's Canadian Air, Air Force, or RCAF. Oh, I got it. Hey, it was in there somewhere. Um, Canadian Air Force <laughs> coming in to do it from Israel to Athens. Here is, well, hold on a second. I'll just show you this. The Globe and Mail is reporting, first Canadian evacuation plane privately organized flies out of Israel. This is reported yesterday at 2.04 p.m. Melanie Jolie's press conference is at 9.21 a.m. But it's ridiculous 
how seemingly inept our entire government is. It's not inept, though. They're meaning to do this. It's not a mistake, I don't think. Here is Mel Jolie. We'll begin the assisted departure of Canadians from Tel Aviv in the coming days, by the end of the week, with the help of aircraft from the Canadian Armed Forces. They will arrive in Tel Aviv and bring Canadians to Athens. My colleague, Pablo Rodriguez, and I have been working on the next steps from there. Together, we have secured with Air Canada a plane and a crew to bring Canadians home from Athens. These flights will be available to Canadian citizens, their spouses, and their children, as well as to Canadian permanent residents, their spouses, and their children. Let me be clear, this includes dual nationals, because a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. We're also working on additional options for those who cannot reach the airport in Tel Aviv, and I'll be able to take questions on this. So there you go. The um, RCAF and Air Canada at some point eventually will bring people home, maybe kind of sort of. Pretty wild stuff, right? Where private people are getting it done faster. VP Mike says they put Jolie in a military uniform to make it look like she came back from a war and not a turkey dinner. They should have put some soot on her face and given her a smoke. What a joke. Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed I noticed the attire, but it didn't it wasn't top of mind. It's very subtle, right? The military kind of flashing here, the squared off pockets, the color, the the adornments on on her buttons and things like that all very very reminiscent of military i'm surprised she doesn't have a patch on her shoulder or maybe a chevron or two right it's very very subtle but you can certainly pick up on it and he's right they're they're doing that for a reason to get you to have that mentality of war a holly doan says foreign minister melanie jolie won't comment on <clears throat> comment on records indicating her office approval of funding for a group this is group Canadians for Justice and Peace in the Middle East. And that group called Israel a sadistic perpetrator of war crimes. So is the government funding this group? If so, how much? And the answer is yes. And that question is racist. Brett Weinstein said the division instantly created by the barbaric Hamas attack was a huge win for the deep state. That may just be the luck of the draw, but other possibilities exist as well. We must be able to discuss the full landscape without becoming villains in each other's eyes. I have questions. I have questions. And if you ask questions, if you, if you ask the wrong questions, people will, will accuse you of being an anti-Semite or being a, a Holocaust denier or something to that effect, something, something unforgivable. And then they block you and they don't want to talk to you anymore, right? It's pretty wild stuff because... People who would be on your side, people who would agree with you for most of the things break at certain things like that. And I think that if we had a more fulsome understanding of history and what happened in the past, we'd have a better understanding of what's happening right now. A lot of people really don't, really, really don't. And you can forgive them. We're not taught it. We're not taught it. They, in fact, tear you away from it if you're interested in it. I love history. I really enjoy history. Hardcore history, Dan Carlin, he, he puts together a great podcast, although he gets up his own nose about things a little bit. And I I suffer the same. So like he'll go off on a tangent, but he'll his will be like a history tangent. And he'll talk about this whole other branch and that is tangential, but like really works. Um, and it's like a half hour branch. And then he'll come back to the main thing. And you're like, well, hold on. I was I was really invested in that branch. What are you talking about? Go back to the other thing. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I really like it. I, I really like history. But most people, I can understand why people get turned off of learning. Learning is more about obey me and like repeat these route things. But learning really should be investigating kind of things that you're interested in and then getting a, a very wide and broad kind of understanding of of that topic. But people aren't encouraged to do that. They're encouraged to get a job and and then, you know, drink at nine o'clock and and uh do all sorts of things that pass the time, but don't enrich you in a way that is, in a way that maybe we're supposed to, I don't know. People don't understand how to pursue happiness either. People, people think that happiness is like sitting on a beach somewhere, but it's not. Happiness is, is moving towards a, a goal that you have decided is worthwhile. Happiness is progress towards that goal that you have decided is worthwhile. And a lot of people refuse to choose something and that is, makes them languish and that breeds uh, depression and unhappiness because you, you're not moving towards anything meaningful because you haven't chosen anything that you care about enough, right? Or you don't know, you don't even know that you're supposed to choose something that you're car- that you're caring enough. You're waiting for somebody to tell you to choose something. Choose something. Choose something and do something about it. If you needed that. Um, anyway, back to Israel. 
Six Pack says, wonder if they even bothered looking for the ammonium nitrate. It's still missing. And so is the January 6th pipe and pipe bomber. Right. So there is a person. Well, that's a that's a U.S. story. But there was people caught on cameras throwing pipe bombs around on January 6th. None of them went off. But what happened with that? And here's Chuck. And he says, in case you missed it, 30 tons of ammonium nitrate is missing from a train shipment and senators are getting satellite phones. 30 tons of ammonium nitrate is in the wrong hands, could level a small city. Paying attention yet. I thought it was plausible considering the way the Hamas attack happened and the idea that we've got a um, whole bunch of people in the United States from the southern border and even in Canada through different means who may be of the same mentality to create a terrorist chaos attack situation where they say, don't worry, we can solve this problem. All you have to do is put up all these cameras and have digital ID and then we'll solve the situation. You're not a terrorist, right? Until they decide that you are a terrorist and they use the they use that infrastructure they've built to keep you safe on you. Uh, but anyway, all these terrorists could be infiltrating all across the US and then 30 tons of ammonia nitrate, big bomb blows up a small city. They say it's a nuke, right? All of this chaos is used to drive public opinion, used to get um, the permission to go to the next step. And it just seems pretty wild. Here is Foreign Affairs Minister, again, Mel Jolie, she was asked about Canada's response to the Hamas attack. She answered, I'm concerned that this could be a second front to what's happening in the world, as we're also dealing with Ukraine, which is our first front. What does that even mean? Great question. It's a great question. Here we go. Oh, it's not at the beginning. Okay, good. Here we go. I'm concerned that this could be a second front to what is happening in the world, as we are also dealing with Ukraine which is our first front. And so uh, that's why I've been uh, talking to many, many of my colleagues and been uh, in contact with them every hour. I'm concerned that this could be a second front to... I remember um, when I was a kid, people talking about tactics for, I mean, I had a family that really enjoyed talking World War II and tactics and things like that. Not at a, a really kind of deep level. We played risk. <laughs> and second front, Hitler opening a second front against Russia. You know, that was, that was talk, talked about a lot. Um, my brother, my older brother thought uh, he had, he had opinions about it. And other people said, no, those opinions, that's not, that's not actually how it would happen. So on and so forth. Anyway, there was robust conversations about it. Are they trying to shoehorn this into a global conflict it seems it seems like this whole second front talk we're already in a war we've always been in a war you know we've always been at war with eurasia don't even ask about it it's just kind of the constant state of of our situation but we don't spend any money on on our defense we don't have a, a two percent gdp defense spending we don't meet our nato goals our nato partners are ignoring us we'll get there in a minute um What's up with that, right? If we're in such a dangerous situation, why are we focusing on gender studies? Why are we neutering our military? What kind of idiots, what kind of enemies, what kind of evil people do we have running our country? Here is Rupa and she's sharing this. Hamas founder is sitting in the front of a green screen from his luxury digs in Qatar, calls on Muslims to carry out violence around the world on Friday. And so this is brother Rashid. So people were saying, stay in on Friday, don't go out to public events or anything like that. And um, because the potential for violence is genuine and real. I don't know what level, I don't know if it's like a five of 10, seven of 10, nine of 10 in Canada. Canada. People are saying there are legitimate real risks because this guy is, is calling for this. I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to give you a taste. Um, Khalid Massal, the leader and founding member of Hamas. I wonder how much Bibi, do you, do you think him and Bibi get together on the phone? They've got a Zoom meeting later on today. Um, they, member of Hamas gives a speech today asking Muslims all around the world to do the following, to show anger, especially next Friday in Muslim countries. Friday, tomorrow is uh, Friday the 13th. Oh my gosh, right? So be wary, but not because it's not because it's superstitious, because people are calling for, you know, military actions against people who they don't like. Here is Dean and the Globe and Mail is reporting Doug Ford. Jewish groups are condemning QP Ontario's president for tweets about Israel through uh, Israel. Uh, the Globe and Mail is reporting and. Dean says, shit just got real for QP and for Fred Han, dead man walking. So they're going to have to oust him. Um, I think Doug Ford's probably going to refuse to meet with him if, if there's any negotiations that have anything to do with Fred Han. Nope. Sorry about your luck. We're not, we're not dealing with your illegitimate nonsense people. It's interesting how many people are being removed from positions for 
for stating a position on this. Uh, there are a lot of people, that, it's funny, I'm getting people who say that they're longtime listeners, some people who preamp, like preamble um, the criticism of the way I'm talking about Israel with, I've, I, I'm a paying subscriber and I can't believe what you're saying, or I'm a paying subscriber and you've got it wrong, uh, all sorts of stuff. And then like when I ask, like, oh yeah, like where do you subscribe, like Locals or Canada Poly, which, which one do you listen to the audio? How do you how do you consume the show? They just want to yell at me more. And I'm like, that's interesting because I don't know who you are. Like I've never heard, heard of you before. <laughs> and now you're talking to me, but like, I know a lot of my subscribers. I, we talk like, anyway, I find it very interesting and like not talk like on the phone or anything like that, but there are ways of getting a hold of me. And a lot of people, uh, have communicated with me in one way or the other, either to, like, cause I do my own tech support. I do, I do everything on the show. And so people, if they have a problem, they're talking to me. And I think that some people try and a think that they're not going to be talking to me. So they email trying to do things that are kind of hinky. And then when I respond, they, don't respond back. So it's interesting. It's interesting the response to all of this. It seems it seems what coordinated, yeah, planned the whole deal. Seems planned. The bots, the everything, right? That's the new current thing. And if you're not listening, whew, you know, scary stuff for you. Brian Lilly says in a showdown with Hamilton MPP Sarah Jama, NDP leader Marit Stiles faced a test of her leadership. She failed utterly and completely failed. While Jama and her side won. Sad day for Ontario politics. I would have ejected her probably, but the NDP leader probably would have lost her party and her leadership for doing that. So, very interesting. Very interesting. The federal NDP leader loves Sarah Jama, and this is March thirteenth, and he's promoting Sarah Jama. Sarah Jama is uh, on the side of Palestinians and Hamas although I don't think Palestinians and Hamas are exactly the same. There's going to be innocent people, and then there's going to be the militarized group of, of terrorists that were funded by the United States and Israel. Right? Different. Because the Palestinian people lose in this situation. <laughs> anyway, everybody's on board with, with the terrorists. That's what, they have to, that's what they have to do, they say. But Jagmeet Singh, the leader of the NDP, is right on board with that kind of messaging. Right? And so pretty wild stuff. Pretty wild stuff. But I birth issued a warning about Sarah Jama's anti-Semitism and called for her removal as an Ontario NDP candidate during the Hamilton Centre by-election. But Jagmeet Singh knew better and gave her a lovely endorsement. Anyway, I've, I haven't heard the federal NDP leader express any buyer's remorse. So there you go. They're, they're all ideologues. They're all ideologues. It's pretty wild. Here is Ukraine. And sorry, Ukraine, we've got a we've got a war we want to fund, and you're just oof, you're like the second choice. Like if this war hadn't come along, we'd definitely be sending you more money. But as this war came along, BB and I, we've got to we've got to support Israel, and Ukraine is in Israel. Here we go. Ukraine funding, we're we're coming near to the end of the rope. I mean, today we announced two hundred million dollars. Um, and we'll keep that aid going as long as we can, but it, it's it's not going to be indefinite. So are we moving with a sense of alacrity? Absolutely. I couldn't give you a date certain on the calendar. <laughs> All that Ukraine funding just coming to an end. You know, oh man, we're moving with a sense of alacrity. Sure we are. Ryan says, Adam Adam Kinzinger just tweeted that Scalazi is the best option for Ukraine. And there you have it. Scalazi is the new speaker of the house, not not Jim Jordan. And I was saying, it's probably Jim Jordan, and I'm, I'm skeptical about that because he's going to fund Israel. Forget Israel. Scalazi's going to fund Ukraine? I don't think so. Blinken's, Blinken's signaling Ukraine's out, Israel's in. So jeepers creepers, right? Pull down your Ukraine decorations. It's Israel season, baby. Illuminati bot says Hunter. Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to CanadaPoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.